So last week, the Balan team at Square Enix released a demo of their upcoming release, Balan Wonderworld. The Balan team, led by former Sonic Team founders Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima, wanted to use their passion for game design to create a brand new IP, and from that passion came Balan Wonderworld, a game that's art style feels like a fusion of like Sonic Team's two most notable series, Sonic the Hedgehog and Nights into Dreams. After the community finally got their hands on a demo, there was a lot of vocal disappointment with the release. People were quick to let their opinions known on social media, and I think the community's message is pretty clear. Please delay the game. Now, as much as I wouldn't mind the game getting delayed and fine-tuned myself, I think there is a giant possibility that the Balan team won't be able to delay the release, and in that situation, I, th I still think this can be an amazing title on release day with, you know, a day one patch or something. After playing the Balan Wonderworld demo thoroughly, I believe I've come up with three elaborate changes that I think can turn this game from mid to like amazing. I, I boiled it down to three things because I don't think the game is as bad as some people would lead you to believe. Like some people are like fear mongering that this is like a terrible game or you know they fucking hate it. It's, it's not that bad as it is. It, it, it just it has a lot of potential it has a lot of good ideas and I think a little bit of fine-tuning can make it better there are some jobs where you need a needle and other jobs where you need a hammer and I think Balan Wonderworld just needs the needle leave a comment you know question of the day like what do you think Balan Wonderworld needs are you are you still gonna pick it up day one regardless um, and how do you feel about the demo in general so here are the three things that I think Balan Wonderworld needs so one is to increase the top speed of the character, two is to make jumping a universal trait at the very least among all the suits, and three is to make the transition between suits quicker or more seamless. At first the game won't feel too bad, but when you start needing to backtrack in stages to find areas or places to explore, the lack of speed becomes fairly noticeable. Your character starts at a nice jog and only increases speed based on the suit that they're wearing. It doesn't feel like you're always going as fast as you should, but if the Balan team were to increase the top speed so that the player could eventually accelerate into moving a lot faster, or even make a, a run button that moves you at top speed, then you can make the feel of the character less sluggish when running long distances and make the feel of the game overall more enjoyable. When you first move around, your character only has a run and a jump, which is fine when you're in the Isle of Tims, but as you get your first suit, you realize the limitations that a suit can have. But you know, there will be over 80 in the main game, so how the game changes will ultimately be at the mercy of those suits. As you collect more of them, you realize some suits can't even jump. You know, jumping, a fundamental method of controlling a character in platforming, is absent in certain parts of Balan Wonderworld. Now, kudos to the developers for designing stages where you won't need to jump to complete the stage if the right suit isn't somewhere nearby, but it still feels like an unnecessary limitation to the abilities of certain suits. Especially considering how all four face buttons do the exact same command, they could easily throw some variety in there at the very least and a universal jump would be a good place to start. Lastly, I think the amount of suits in this game will be massive and there are some stages where you'll have to use multiple, if not all of them, to beat the stage. As the game currently is, you can carry up to three costumes at a time and cycle between them as you please. When you collect the fourth suit, the last one in your line gets taken out and put into storage, that is unless you're playing with a second player as they'll bump up your number of costumes that can be held at a time to six costumes. You can check your storage and change your costume lineup at every checkpoint. There's there's a little um, curtain that pops up with the little uh, bunny helmet over it where you can go in to change your outfits, right? I think this is a good layout as to how suits should operate in this game, but I, I think that by increasing the number of costumes that you can hold at, at once, and making the transition between suits faster, you can make the costumes better feel like abilities of the character rather than separate entities that you need to manage simultaneously. Heck, you know, if they could map like the suit abilities to face buttons rather than make them separate forms that you, you know, transition into, you could bring the harmony of the character together a lot stronger. And so those were the three things I think could be like really quick fixes. The, the last one about the suits, I think that's more of like a, that's, that's a low priority one. I think it could make the game better, but I think the first two are a lot more important. 
And, um, you know, uh, this is a demo, so I'm assuming that the Battle team would like some constructive criticism. So I'm just gonna uh, just shout out some positives um, of the game that I've seen so far, other than cutscenes, because again, cutscenes look pretty good. Um, I, I do like the utility of Tim's. Um, it's not exactly explained, which, you know, you know, it's fine. You know, sometimes you know, exploring things and discovering things yourself. Uh, the way the Tims are used in the game is that the main collectible is food for the Tims. And so as you collect more of that collectible, um, when you go back to the to the Isle of Tims, the main hub world, you feed them to your Tims, and then your Tims have this sort of energy that they release into this machine, and this machine unlocks more things, right? And so you can find little Tim eggs along the along certain stages, and you know, um, they can actually get you more Tims, and Tims actually have a lot more utility than they're shown to have, because it still feels a bit random. I do feel like they're going to explain it more as the game progresses, but it, it's not really explained at the beginning. They actually do help you out in the stage. Like, I, I don't know if you noticed it, but sometimes they do bring you back items, they bring you back little crystals, um, they bring you... Um, they sort of point you in the right direction, they fly with you, and sometimes the, they might even fight enemies. And it's color-coded based on the certain type of Tim. And I'm hoping that as you go on later into the stage, or later into the game, that you can pick the type of Tims that you bring with you into a stage, and that the more that they grow, the more the more useful that they will be in stages. But otherwise, it's, it's a pretty fun side game to make you go through stages and like collect the little gems and crystals to bring it back to your Tims to feed them and to get something out of it. It does sort of remind me of Chow's from Sonic Adventure, like it, it is very reminiscent of something like that, using sort of like what you get in a stage to raise these little creatures and the fact that they do actually give you something in return that's not just, you know, uh, Chow racing is pretty cool. The thing I like about the game, I do like the level design. Um, the levels do feel very fleshed out. Um, I think the design of the levels is really well to work with like multiple suits. It's not too big, it's not too small. I think um, a lot of them are like just right, you know, for, for sort of like speed running through um, or f for playing through, not speed running. And I think that feel it feels pretty fun, it's enjoyable, and I think that the full game is going to be a really, really, um, you know, joy to play through. I just think, you know, with these little changes, it could become something like good. It could become good to great. You know, good is the enemy of greatness. And I think to, to achieve greatness, I think some of these changes could be made. Although I would like to see, I, I'm, I'm pretty like, I'm sort of like predicting this, but I'm guessing like one of the final suits that you're going to unlock is going to be Balan himself. So you're going to be able to feel like Balan when going through the stage. And it's going to be the most absolutely busted suit ever, but it's going to be pretty difficult to get. Or it's going to, you're going to have to get like all the statues or something like that. But I do feel like at the very, by the very end, you will be able to play as someone like a Balan suit, you know? So yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about um, the possibilities of Balan Wonderworld. What, which of the 80 suits that you um, are sort of interested in or what type of suit would you like to see? And yeah, whether it's, you know, something that you've already seen in one of the trailers or if it's something that, you know, you think would be a good um, idea for them to use in the game. But that's going to be all for me for now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this boy, Sir Nistro, commander of the robotic unit, signing out. Peace. You. Okay, so. You do something here. Now, yeah, so so you feed these little Tims. Oh. And then they eat them. They're fucking adorable. Look at these things. What the fuck? <laughs> now, do they give me something in return? No, these little... These little shits just eat everything and then take it all from themselves.